Well, thank you. Thank you. It was, it was literally OBS. OBS dropped an update. And it made me hop off and do the update. I couldn't, I couldn't connect anything. Did the update? Works fine. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to pack another bong or bowl over here. I don't think I got any in the bong. I think I already killed this one off. I try to have, you know, fun sounding, engaging. Like I, 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 I spent a lot of time listening to, um, no copyright music, trying to decide what best fit the mood and theme of the Troll Patrol. The Friday Night Freak Show has um, chill wave music, and I really I like the I like the different aesthetics to the two shows. I think I've done a good job, not to jack myself off or anything. But I mean, I should, I should. Clinically, thank you, thank you. Anyway, nobody missed out on anything. I never even started the next story. We, we like, it happened perfectly, at least. If I was going to get uh, chopped off, it happened right after we wrapped up Herschel Walker and right as I was introing the Dr. Oz story. What am I lying about? What am I lying about? I cannot tell a lie or whatever fucking Abraham Lincoln supposedly said. I guess, I guess since I came back, I got to give you a new meme, right? I should I keep drinking those sodas because they're so good. But, uh, they make me burp. <laughs> oh, shit. Wrong one. Here's your, here's your meme. Yeah, chopped off sounds painful. Some people, some people are into it. When people are trying to get you to participate in No Nut November, but you don't get down like that, I love busting nuts. It's good for you. So I've, I've just realized that my logo is going to block bottom text on memes. <laughs> that could be an issue, or I could not care about it. Maybe, maybe we even do away with memes of the day now that, you know, I don't just need to have something up on screen while I bullshit. Oh my God, Maynard is bitching at me to let him out. I mean, it's the first day of No Nut November, and we've already got two shooters that are on the loose, one in Denver and one in New Jersey. We're going to be talking about that here in a little bit. Speaking of shooters, we're going to go to the Parkland shooter, the sentencing trial uh, that has been going on. We were, we were at the final phase. Apparently, the judge got really pissed off at the defense attorneys today. I think the judge has been a little harsh. That's just me. I thought the judge in the Daryl Brooks case was incredibly fair when she didn't have to be. Because Korean streams exist. Well, and, the, and then you've got, you know, people like Amaranth and shit on here. I'm, just, I'm sure it's kind of hard to do a No Nut November with that going on. Well, shall we pick up where we left off before we so rudely interrupted? I can't believe this is a sentence I'm uttering. Dr. Oz asked his surgeon friend to downplay his role in poppy murder. A cardiothoracic 
surgeon who helped propel Dr. Mehmet Oz, who is currently running for Pennsylvania's open Senate seat, to stardom, said he refused to say publicly that his former colleague had no hand in experiments that allegedly killed more than 300 dogs, claiming he viewed it as the candidate asking for a political favor. Dr. Eric Rose was the chief of cardiac surgery at Columbia University's medical program and was Dr. Oz's superior during the research he conducted in 2003 that led to the USDA finding the university in violation of the Animal Welfare Act. My God. The surgeon spoke to the Washington Post and revealed that approximately three weeks ago, Dr. Oz contacted him after years of not speaking and asked him to publicly exonerate him for the alleged inhumane treatment of the puppies used in the experiments. This story, I'm amazed, didn't get more traction, by the way. Dr. Rose said his relationship with Dr. Oz soured approximately three years ago after having been close for decades. He told the paper he opposes Dr. Oz's political views and has donated $165 to his opponent, John Fetterman. Clearly a man who wants to kick authority in the balls. He's kicking authority in the balls. Guy comment. I am so sorry that you have had a shitty day. I'm sorry that you walked in on a story about Dr. Oz trying to downplay his role in puppy murder. Not only that, not only, not only, uh, was that sketchy as fuck. His medical research was once rejected due to the strength of data. A study Oz authored was reportedly scheduled to lead a session at a thoracic surgery conference before it was withdrawn, and Oz was banned from presenting to the organization for two years. Dr. Oz was reportedly banned from presenting to a medical organization for two years beginning in 2003 after a medical study he authored was called into question due to the strength of the data used. The Washington Post reports that a study Oz authored on heart bypass surgery was scheduled to lead off a session of the 83rd Annual American Association for Thoracic Surgery conference before the study was ultimately withdrawn and Oz was temporarily banned from presenting to the organization. Shapiro is way up in the polls right now. It appears Shapiro is going to run away with it. Doug Mastriano, fucking nuts. Doug Mastriano is fucking nuts. That hasn't stopped candidates in other places. We're going to go to Wisconsin now, where a group appointed to a technical school board... After their terms expired, more than a year after their terms have expired, they still refuse to resign. With Wisconsin Supreme Court approvable, coordinated norm breaking across state boards allows members appointed under Republican administrations to hold control of some and possibly take control of others sooner than usual. So we're reading from the Badger Report. I can't, or the Badger Project. I can't speak to the validity of the site, but there's a local uh, news source in Wisconsin. Three members of the 13-seat Wisconsin Technical College System Board continue to serve in those positions despite their terms ending in May of 2021. The trio, Becky Levzov, Kelly Trudot, and Mary Williams, a former Republican state legislator, were all appointed by former Governor Scott Walker. In June, the right-leaning majority of the Wisconsin Supreme Court ruled that a Walker-appointed member of the state's Department of Natural Resources Board, Fred Fern, who had also refused to resign despite his term expiring, could not be removed by Democratic Governor Tony Evers without cause. That court decision opened the door for the three members of the Technical College Board to remain indefinitely past the ends of their terms. Technically, it's illegal because the judges say it's so. Reached by phone and asked why she was staying on the board when her term ended, Williams had the following to say. I think it's a rule, she said in the short interview before ending uh, it to take another call. You stay, and as soon as the Senate takes up that person and they go through what they have to do, that's when I'm gone. What the fuck does that even mean? Lev Zrov, a dairy farmer from Rio and Trudot, a construction trade associate executive from... Wanaki did not return several messages seeking comment. 
Regardless of what happens in the Republican-controlled state Senate, board members with expired terms could step down at any time, but the state Supreme Court decision severely restricts the governor's ability to force them out. Since Evers became governor in 2019, the state Senate has refused to confirm many of his appointees, including for the DNR board and the Technical College board. Evers' appointees would replace the Republican-appointed member who now refuses to depart the boards despite their term ending. Democracy is in shambles across this country, if we ever had it. What semblance of democracy we had is in shambles across the country. And while that's going on, meanwhile, Fox is upset about cats. Yeah, you heard me right. You heard me right. Fox is upset about college students wanting to take cats to college. Buffering on me here. Here we go. Here we go. ...of how uh, we are raising snowflakes. <laughs> because, I mean, if you honestly can't make it in college, then just drop out. I mean, uh, well, although I know a lot of people want to take advantage of the freebies, but just drop out anyway. Do us all a favor. I don't think animal rights activists would be too proud of this either. I wouldn't what? want any college student manhandling my cat. <laughs> yeah, but Kaylee, I don't think these kids need cats. I think they need discipline. I think they need a slap yep. in the face. <laughs> because these are the same oh kids that get a professor fired for being too hard on their way to medical Great school. Point. These are kids that... We're, we're going to see a professor get fired a conservative here later. They shout out speakers. They chase them off campus. But a cat will make everything better. Guess what? That doesn't work in the real world. World. Yeah, you're talking about my, my professor that I love so much <laughs> back at NYU. NYU. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. No, I remember uh, on one of my campuses getting a note that there would be dogs and puppies for us uh, to <laughs> soothe us during exam oh, time. Funny. And I thought, is this real? <laughs> I mean, no. What a dis I do want to point out that suicide rates among college freshmen especially are incredibly high. That it's really hard to adjust on a college campus, especially if you've gone away from home maybe you need to get away from home you had an abusive situation at home and then you go to college and you feel alone and it's overwhelming those things happen so a college taking steps to curb suicide rates seems like a perfectly reasonable idea to me exactly war machine what do these talking heads these privileged assholes know about real life Distraction for kids who don't want to study. Number know. one. <laughs> Number two, I don't need to be coddling a puppy. I need my, you know, organic chemistry book if I'm, you know, in, in pre-med here. This is insanity. Give me a cup of coffee, a cookie, it's, it's and a stack of It's insanity that you fucks are talking step. about this. I don't this. need a puppy in a, my lap to study for exams. This is an issue on a supposed news show. That's what's insanity about this. That's right. My God. These people are crazy. Bat shit fucking crazy. Right wingers are morons. Don't worry, I got more. I got more of Fox getting triggered, but first you gotta watch the thing that got triggered about. The the view did a segment about Halloween costumes because you know it's the day after Halloween or it's the maybe it was on Halloween yesterday they did this this clip and Fox got pissed off. I don't know when exactly this happened. This is The View talking about Halloween costumes. Mad about cats and dorm rooms, yes. Horror stories and shocking moments. So here to show off costumes inspired by this year's hottest topics is our wardrobe supervisor, Ashley Alderford Kaufman. Woo! Say that five times fast. I cannot believe, one, you had a baby a month ago, and two, <laughs> Ashley, tell us about your costume. Well, before we get to me, let's talk about all of you and your wardrobe changes. <laughs> you look fabulous. Sounds normal to do a Halloween so costume year, segment. I, I did one last night with Stranger animals and things. costumes. Oh, yeah. oh. I love that. Okay, so Ashley, let's get to some of these hot topic costumes for kids. Okay, so one of the hugest topics that you guys talked about this year, the raid on Trump's Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> yes. Now you see what Fox is upset about. Toilet 
with our FBI. Drake, I hope you mean The View and not my show. And The View making you want to read a book is totally understandable. Agent. <laughs> No, it's going to be funny watching Fox News react to this. A love of a beloved icon. You hear that music? What does that mean? It means do, the do you want to watch the rest of this, or do you want to go ahead and watch Fox get upset? <laughs> Scott, or I'm, I'm sorry, Toads, good evening. Also, Scott Comet. Good evening to you. I wish the Taco Bell pay for this. So, cute. so Choco Taco may not be available in the supermarket, but this guy certainly is. They're, pay, they're, they're playing the sunny music. They're playing the sunny music. All right, here you go. You saw the Trump costume. That's what Fox News is going to react to here in this segment. One week away. And the host, oh boy, they were eating it up. One of the hugest topics that you guys talked about this year, the raid on Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Yes. <laughs> what was I thinking? I didn't have to do with you guys. Fox showed it again. So we have Trump as a toilet with our FBI agents. <laughs> Here we have our Dr. Oz and his Oh, I guess we should have stuck around for Dr. Oz. He's got his crew to say. Lashing out, calling the spectacle insane and deranged. Joe, what say you? Not high enough oh, for this. This is indeed. Trump derangement syndrome times 10. I mean, it's sick, actually. I mean, I have a first and a third grader that did their Halloween parade yesterday, and I didn't see any dressed up as FBI agents. Using these little kids like, like, like their props to make a political statement and somehow thinking this is funny. And ABC continues to keep this. I saw several, several right-wing uh, uh, figureheads with promoting costumes with, like, Joe Biden on a bicycle and shit. Uh, did you see the Donald Trump Jr.? Ah, no. oh, shit. It skipped ahead on me there. Donald Trump Jr. tweeted out the Halloween costume with, like, underwear and a hammer, alluding to the Paul Pelosi attack. Using these little kids like 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 their props to make a political statement and somehow thinking this is funny. And ABC continues to it keep this train wreck of a show under its news division. You can see why Meghan McCain left and has almost nothing good to say about her experience there. It's not just political debate. Well, nobody likes Meghan anymore. McCain. It's a hate fest. And it's a boring one that uh, I would think it's, it's become the one thing that Barbara Walters didn't want this show to become. Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary folk in the audience, he just said that The View was a hate fest. A Fox News commentator said The View was a hate Unpredictable, fest. Unpredictable, right? It's become predictable. And it's co-hosted by some of the most unlikable people on the planet. So well, congratulations to you, I, another black eye. I was thinking two years ago, if a couple of kids had dressed up as members of law enforcement, oh, my word, their heads would have exploded. Wait, wait, does she think, does she think kids don't dress up as cops? I would say that is one of the top outfits that kids dress as. I was a cop one year. I'm, I'm almost certain I might've been a cop multiple years. Yeah, kids always, this woman on Fox News just said kids don't dress up like cops. Like, if, if a kid was to dress like a cop, their heads would explode. <laughs> exactly. These people. Uh, I, I, I gotta give you a content warning. This is where <laughs> you guys have told me in the past that I am supposed to give you a content warning anytime this guy pops up on screen. So, fair enough. Content warning. Senator Ted Cruz calls out Trump for not opening up his war chest to support Republicans in tight races. Because, you know, as if... Uh, fucking shit. 
as if uh, Donald Trump is going to give money to other people. Look in Senate candidates is Mitch McConnell's super PAC. Mitch puts all of his money behind moderates and incumbents, and conservatives get left alone. Conservatives get starved for resources, and Republican donors give to that super PAC knowing that that's not going to go to conservatives. And right now, I'm trying to fill that void in House races. And in House races, I'm backing conservatives because Republican leadership does the same thing. They back moderates. They don't back conservatives with anywhere near the same financial resources. And so, look, part of the reason why Arizona and New Hampshire are not getting the funding that they deserve is that both of those candidates are strongly aligned with Donald Trump. And Republican leadership doesn't like that. He's coming real good in the old days. Yeah, the majority did. of strong conservatives. Um, and wait, I wait, wait, wait. He's not on somebody's podcast. This is actually we're 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 watching the verdict with Ted Cruz. This is his podcast. The mistake not to invest more vigorously in both Arizona and New Hampshire. Joe O'Day, who's running, I think is a good candidate. The single largest funder of Republican. Uh, sorry, it's one of those MSN things, things again. like that. And so Trump, I think the next day, immediately came out blasting O'Day and telling Republicans. Don't Everybody's got a podcast. And you're just sitting there going, OK, great. So we're going to elect the Democrat who votes pretty much 100 percent of the time with Schumer and, and Biden. You know, O'Day would not be conservative in Texas. But no. In Colorado, it'd be a great pickup. In Colorado, I want people to vote for Joe O'Day. Everyone has a I podcast. I want Chuck Schumer out of power. Um, I wish O'Day had had the judgment just not to poke the bear. Just don't, don't piss off Trump because the races we lose are races where there's a pissing match between the Republican candidate and Trump. It's a self-inflicted wound almost every time when you look at this map at this point. And do I wish... Trump would exercise the restraint not to take a bat to him. Yes, but he's not going to. I will say, but I don't. I don't understand. Okay, like we wish Trump would shut up, but we want his money. Is that pretty much what Ted Cruz just said? <laughs> Apparently, uh, Trump's ex-girlfriend. I had to read this a few times. Not ex-aide. not ex-campaign staffer, this Trump ex says Trump absolutely told her she got intelligence from her. Oh! So guys, I struggle with this headline. I put it on the, on the list for the show just because I'm like, well, this is going to be an interesting watch. We got video. So now I get what the headline says. It finally sunk in. <laughs> Remember, I'm doing I'm 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 multitasking the hour before the show. So like I this headline didn't make sense to me, but now she got her intelligence from the white side of her. Now I thought this was going to be a story about her confirming that Trump took intelligence from the White House or some shit. And so, like, when I'm like, I'm just skimming over headlines to put on the on the on the list for the show. Trump's ex girlfriend told her that she got her intelligence. Yeah, I quick read it from the white side of her family. <laughs> This is uh, Carrie Young. Went out with Trump for a couple of years in between Marla and Melania, the, those two marriages. And she's never talked about that time together. Um, she's biracial. Her mother was black, is black. Her father's white. And she sits down with me, talk about a comment that's in the new Maggie Haberman, Haberman book called C Confidence Man. There's a quote in there in which Trump is quoted as saying, now he had met Cara's parents, that she gets her beauty from her mother and, quote, her intelligence from her father, the white side. Oh, End that's quote. super racist. I asked Cara, did he say that? She said, yep, I was standing right there when he did. She said she admonished him. She said, you can't talk like that. That's that's mean. And she also talks about some other situations um, that some point to as evidence that 
if Donald Trump were to decide for, to run for president again, some say among the many bits of baggage that he'd have to take into that contest would be the accusation that he's racist. And there are moments that Ms. Young talks about in our conversation um, in which she addresses that very. I think we do have the, the actual video, though. Here we this is this is Maggie Haberman. I mean, some of the big public things like birtherism was was, was thoroughly yeah. racist. But there are detail, other details you have. Like I didn't know that he had a girlfriend before, just before Melania. That's over, uh, overlapping with her. Yeah, yeah, overlapping with Melania. Overlapping. Um, half black. Father was white. white. Mother was black. And he, what, he told. What did he say about her? He met her parents and he told her that uh, she got her beauty from her mom and her brains from her dad at the white side. Yeah, yeah, more book selling. That's why I thought we were going to get the actual uh, girlfriend. We did not get her words, but there's your reporting, and I absolutely believe that. <laughs> Sounds about white. Trump lawyers throw Alan Weisselberg under the bus as he prepares to spill the beans at trial. The Trump legal team has argued that the former president is the real victim in company tax fraud trial. Wow. Of course. Now, this started yesterday. Lawyers for former President Donald Trump's companies on Monday threw former longtime chief financial officer Alan Weisselberg under the bus during opening statements at a criminal trial over whether the company committed tax fraud. Weisselberg and two of Trump's companies were indicted in Manhattan last year after prosecutors said the company's compensation to Weisselberg included perks like apartments, luxury cars, and private school tuition for his grandchildren that were never reported on his taxes. Weisselberg in August pleaded guilty to 15 charges, including grand larceny, tax fraud, and falsifying business records, he agreed to serve five months, which is pitiful. Five months in prison, pay $1.9 million in back taxes and penalties, and agreed to testify at the Trump Organization trial. Prosecutors on Monday detailed his offenses and vowed that Weiselberg would give jurors the inside story of how he conducted his tax scheme. This case is about greed and cheating, cheating on taxes, prosecutor Susan Hoffinger said in court. The scheme was conducted, directed, and authorized at the highest level of the accounting department. Lawyers representing two of Trump's businesses at the trial, meanwhile, threw Weiselberg under the bus and suggested that Trump may be the real victim of the scheme. Weiselberg did it for Weiselberg, said Michael Vanderveen. Michael Vanderveen. Michael Vanderveen. I'm sorry, I shouldn't make fun of the dude's name. Vanderveen. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're a nice person, Vanderveen. Lindsey Graham got some bad news earlier today. The Supreme Court uh, declined to block his subpoena and he will have to testify in Georgia. Have to testify. The Supreme Court has denied a stay for his testimony in front of a grand jury in Fulton County, Georgia, where the DA down there is investigating Donald Trump's alleged interference in the 2020 election. The application for the stay and an injunction pending appeal was presented to Justice Clarence Thomas. He issued a temporary stay, you remember, last week. It was referred then to the full court which ultimately shot it down. There's no word yet from the DA on a new date for when Lindsey Graham will be asked to appear. I can't say that. I can't repeat. I can't repeat your uh, comment, Mox. Amazingly enough, violates terms of service. Staying in Georgia... Georgia congressman used donor funds to fight subpoena over subverting the election. <laughs> a congressman used campaign funds in an attempt to stymie an investigation into Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Representative Jody Heiss was among the lawmakers at the White House for a December 2020 strategy meeting about subverting the results of the presidential election. 
According to testimony, former White House staffer Cassidy Hutchinson gave to the White House or to the House January 6th committee when Congress reconvened following the riot at the January 6th, 2021. Uh, high subjected to counting Georgia's electoral votes, claiming without providing evidence that Joe Biden's win in the state was faulty due to an unprecedented amount of fraud and irregularities. Part of her inquiry into the former president's role in the scheme for him to remain in office, Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Fannie Willis subpoenaed Heiss in June, seeking his testimony before a grand jury. The day before his deadline to appear, Heiss filed a motion to quash the subpoena an attorney from the Austin, Texas-based law firm, the Goober Group. The Goober Group. I think it's the Gober Group or Go Goober Group. I'm probably saying it wrong, but we're going to call it the Goober Group. Represented Heist in court oh, on July 25th, a district court judge rejected Heist's challenge. August 1st, Heise's campaign paid the <laughs> paid the Goober Group of 46 grand for legal fees according to a filing the campaign made to the Federal Election Commission in mid-October. A spokesperson <laughs> The Goober Group couldn't be reached for comment. That's not in the story. I made that <laughs> It broke me. <laughs> I'm sorry, that broke me. I can't. Goober group. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say astute political commentary. The description of the show. <laughs> the Goober Group. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll get it together. The Goober Group. Goob. Yeah, fucking Andy always calling Goober. Goob. Oh, fuck. I can't even. I can't even anymore. My evens are all gone now. Brian, you're <laughs> and, then, and, and then the Zionist is back in the chat over here. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change the way I got the audio set up. Then you won't hear that when I'm like setting shit up over here. That'll be smoother. We're working out the kinks of the new layout. Yesterday, I had the clip of Biden speaking about it. I can pull it up if you want, but we'll just listen to the White House the economist. He went on with Squawk Box. Squawk Box on CNBC. <laughs> to talk about the Goober Group. <laughs> no. Yesterday, <laughs> the Goober Group. I'm I'm only half paying attention to what's going on around me right now because my mind is just goober group, goober group. And it's not even that funny. I've ran this, like, this is a dead horse by now. I've ran this one into the ground already. It's old. But, like, we're, we're going to have, like, a goober group t-shirt and everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a something. <laughs> I had a clip of Joe Biden speaking yesterday, I believe it was. Uh... Oh no, do I not have my Biden drop? Oh, come on, man. I don't have my Biden drop. Oh, shit. I knew I was bound to be missing one.
Come on, man. <laughs> okay, go. Judy, 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 Judy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a, I've got a buddy. His, his mom's name is Judy. I pulled those. If, and if you've never seen Andy Griffith, you like have no clue what I'm talking. About. You got some of the younger people in the audience are like, "What the fuck?" I don't even. I don't even know where my. There it is. There it is. Come on, man. I gotta. I gotta do so much shit. I gotta do so much shit. Come on, man. Come on, man. Now you work the way you're supposed to. You're in the right spot and everything. Still working out the kinks. Still working out the kinks of the new setup. So I should reintro the story probably so everybody knows what's going on. Uber group is big beat. <laughs> so I believe it was yesterday Joe Biden started talking uh, far more sternly towards oral companies and their, you know, massive fucking profits. I'm not talking about price caps, but it's starting to say something about a windfall tax, which I greatly appreciate. And this is the White House economist going on with Squawk Box earlier today to talk about this Biden proposal of a possible windfall tax. If it was a threat now, it was a threat that he made towards the oil companies that if they did not lower prices, there would be a windfall tax against them. Council Director, you're not really on the political side uh, of, the, of the White House, I don't think, and the strategists on the political side. So I, I don't even think it's fair, really, for me to, gr to, to try to grow you on this. I want to give you a pass. If you just don't want to comment on this at all as the economic director, because um, it's really more of a political... If you don't, as the economic director, if you don't want to comment on oil prices, I'll give you a pass. What the fuck kind of... We're already off to a great start with this interview here on Squawk Box. Uh, a, a fairness issue, I think. I will let you do that. Or do you actually want to say that there are economic benefits to this? Well, let me let me try to put this in context, Joe, and thanks for having okay. me on. You're welcome. You, um, I think if we're talking about any of these conversations, we have to start by re recognizing that we are not in normal times. Uh, we are in a time of war, and the global environment and the global energy markets are fundamentally affected by that reality. And the reason why we have had the supply crisis that we have had and the reason why we have seen price increases that we've seen globally uh, is at the core because of uh, the war and Putin's actions. And so companies that are in a position where prices have increased dramatically have reaped, a, uh, have, have reaped excessive uh, profits uh, from that windfall. And so, you know, the question that the president was raising yesterday and the choice that the president was putting forward yesterday was that those companies in an environment as unique as this one, where this is not about investments made years ago and invest and returns on innovation, but instead a unique situation driven by a geopolitical crisis because of war, those companies have an obligation to act in the interests of not only their shareholders, but also their consumers and also the country. And so that was the point uh, that the president was trying to make. Uh, right. The, the, the issue of, a, the issue of a, a windfall profits tax is one that you've seen a number of other G7 countries uh, move forward with. And the president is clear. What he would like to see is for these companies to actually step up and, for example, reduce the historic margins that they're charging in between the wholesale price and the retail price. That would be good for consumers. And in the long term, it really wouldn't have a long term impact on their profitability. But, it, Brian, in, in the history of the world, have you ever seen a, a situation where if you tax an industry or tax something, you actually get more of it? The quickest way to get less of something is to tax it and to regulate it. So we're already, you know, draining the, the SPR. Some people think that's okay. Other people think that's Agreed, not Mox. very wise Energy at this point. Agreed, Mark. should be nationalized. So Trust why make it harder for the oil companies 
to invest in more production by taxing the, the, the windfall. So you, you call the issue isn't profits. production. Well, yeah, a couple of points. First is on the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Not only is it still half full, but we last week, as, as you know and, and you, you talked about, announced a plan to send certainty to the market that we will repurchase and the Strategic Petroleum Re Reserve will repurchase oil when the price gets down to around $70 a barrel, which not only makes sure that that asset is stronger on the other side of this outcome because we'll be able to um, repurchase more oil at that lower price, but also gives the market some certainty, something that uh, that market actors have been asking for well, true, uh, for true some months. time. Fair enough. But again, I just want to be clear what the president was articulating yesterday. He was he was articulating a choice that the companies have for months said that the better outcome for trying to address these historically unique circumstances are for private sector actions where they act on their own. And the president was urging them to do so. And something like the big spread between wholesale prices and retail prices, where that profit margin on every gallon of gas being sold yeah. is at completely historically unprecedented levels, that's something that could be addressed short of the regulation indeed action. failed the president has for months it. been clear yes. that's the better outcome here and he was just being very direct about that the, 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 but i mean the, the the democratic position seems to be like you know let's put, well, let's put some of the stuff. regulations back in opposed to you know oh complete deregulation failed here i mean not complete deregulation they still think there is a neoliberal solution to the problems we're facing right now And it just ain't so. So we're going to move on to the uh, breaking news portion of the show. We got some. We got some stories we're going to be following here. There was a. There were two cops shot in Newark, New Jersey, and there was a manhunt underway. I don't know if there's been an update yet. We're going to watch this. CBS News piece that I think aired like uh, the six o'clock news. We have breaking news in Newark, New Jersey. Police are searching for a suspect or more who shot at least two officers. Sources tell CBS News the officers were serving a warrant when shots rang out. Police say a gunman may have been on a roof. Both officers were rushed to the hospital. One was reportedly hit in the neck. Police are seen throughout the area and on surrounding rooftops. Governor Phil Murphy tweeted that he is aware about the situation in Newark and is following the developments. Let's bring in CBS News investigative producer Pat Milton. Pat, we are looking. So the, the latest update is that there is still a manhunt ongoing right now in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, this information is a couple hours old, though. At live photos right now where we can see a heavy police presence. What more can you tell us? Yes, it's a very fluid oh, I'm situation sorry. You guys right are watching now, this. as you uh, reported. We're going to have the kinks. Officers, law enforcement are still looking for the shooting suspect. Um, apparently, well, what happened is the officers uh, were shot while they were attempting to serve a warrant in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, the shooter was armed with a rifle, according to our law enforcement sources, and the person shot from either a rooftop or a window. Um, the suspect uh, remains at large. Uh, SWAT is on the scene. FBI has responded. Uh, law enforcement, uh, very heavy law enforcement presence uh, on the scene. Um, the scene is a, apparently an apartment building, and it's about three miles from downtown uh, center of uh, Newark. Um, the officer, uh, one was shot in the neck, as you reported. One was, uh, officer was shot in the leg. They were transported to the hospital. And at this moment, um, they apparently are in stable condition. That is good to hear. Pat, uh, obviously, this is a breaking news situation. And so things I mean, good are is relative. fluid. Do you know anything more about how police are now looking for that suspect that is still at large? Have they confirmed that it's just one person? And do we know anything about the surrounding area, if it's on lockdown, et cetera? They believe that it is one shooter, but uh, still, again, this is a fluid situation. Uh, there's a lot unfolding. Uh, officers are secured a large area, a large swath uh, near the apartment uh, area where uh, everyone is just at a standstill. They've got it all roped off. 
They've got numerous uh, officers going through uh, buildings, backyards, uh, stores, uh, searching for uh, the person that uh, uh, is the suspect in this shooting. All right. Our investigative producer, Pat Mel. So as of like 12 minutes ago was the latest update I could find. There is still a manhunt on, underway. Authorities are still searching for a man. Apparently a six-year-old was also shot. I don't know if the, so it does seem like this has something to do with the shooting that's going on. Six-year-old child, two adults shot in Newark. That's also an ongoing investigation. The six-year-old was not killed. She's in the hospital recovering. Uh, she had a collapsed lung. She's going to make it. Uh, there were three other individuals that were shot in that incident also, but it's an ongoing investigation. So, I'm sorry, so four people were shot in one incident? Three people were shot in one incident and one child. The child was six or seven years old. Three people, including one child? Okay. No. Okay. Two adults and one child. Two adults and one child? Yes. Okay. And was it a, a do you know, any information was there a suspect that's on that the That's ongoing. Uh, it was a response to a uh, shot spot. So now I do not know if this is the same situation that's going on. <laughs> uh, but this is an ongoing, very fluid situation. As you can see, this was posted at 9.25 p.m. It was 30, 45 minutes ago, something like that. So that's what we know thus far. And I don't know if this is connected to the two cops that were shot as well. But I would assume... I would assume they have something to do with each other. Here's another story that is ongoing. This one in Denver. Let me hit the content warning for this one. This is also one of those that was ongoing as of the time that we came on. This was last updated a few hours ago others hurt in a shooting in Denver and police looking for the suspect. And One dead, five the injured. Scene on the east side of Denver. This is right near the Aurora border. Right now, Denver police looking for a dark colored vehicle. You see that on your screen. Fox 31's Vicente Arena is live on scene with the latest. Vicente. We have been learning a lot this afternoon about the shooting that happened here. When we first arrived this afternoon, there were people crying. They were scrambling around trying to figure out what happened right now on the scene. Let's take you closer in to see what exactly is taking place. Investigators walking around where six people were shot on a sidewalk by three people carrying guns. The six people that were shot were standing on a sidewalk on Colfax at Verbena. Denver police say three people jumped out of a vehicle and then began shooting. An adult man was killed. Three men and two women also hurt, three of them critically. Ashley Thompson knows all of the people who were hit. All of them. <laughs> Except for the shooters, which I don't even know why they would shoot. <laughs> Nothing warrants this. Nothing warrants taking somebody's life like this. Do nothing. She, like many others, ran for cover. We don't know what happened. We just hit the ground. Investigators say the suspect's vehicle was northbound on Verbena Street. It stopped at Colfax, then multiple shots were fired next to the market. Alize Adams was working nearby when the shooting happened fast. I just heard the gunshots, but I didn't see anything. Though. The three suspects jumped back in the vehicle, which was located a short three mile suspects at 12th and Yosemite, less than a mile away. The suspects then got into another vehicle, this one, which police are still looking for. Many people here are having a hard time. I was in my room and I just heard like a rain of, of gunshots and I ran over there and a couple of my friends were shot. The motive is not clear at this time. Police so far do not know of any connection between the shooters and the victims. This shooting today taking place in what is described as a crime hot spot. It's not clear how many extra officers might have been on the scene because of that designation in this area. But take 
a close look at the picture on your screen here. This is that SUV, all eyes from the police department looking for that SUV because it is believed that that is the vehicle that the three suspects jumped into after. I'd usually tell you not to narc, but that kind of situation I think warrants it. It's like there's always exception to a rule. I do narc on those motherfuckers. Just another day in mass shooting USA. As far as I can tell, the manhunt is still on in Denver. They um, I did not see an update that said anyone had been apprehended, and that's in the last couple of hours. Gonna hit the content warning one more time. We're going to go to Florida, trial of the Parkland shooter. Remember kids, shoot up drugs, not schools. This was a sentencing trial and I might need to adjust the audio on that one again. <laughs> Sorry about that. This has been a sentencing trial for the Parkland shooter. Uh, one juror voted for life, received a sentence of life. Apparently the parents uh, of the victims were very unhappy with the verdict. They wanted the death penalty. I believe we are in the, the final stages here of the sentencing trial. Judge exploded on the public defenders. And once again, these are public defenders. I looked this up. These, these people are in a very high profile situation, incredibly high pressure, wanting to do a good job for someone everyone considers to be a monster. And this judge, I, I feel, has grandstanded. So... Uh, Apparently things got very interesting today. No one jumped up to try to tap down that rhetoric. That is the rhetoric that I am talking about. That is what I'm trying to be very clear on. Jeff, Marcus, the state, they can hide behind their arguments, but we all are witnessing what is occurring in this courtroom. Which is myself. I'm a judge. And, and I, I understand that I'm in charge you, of the decorum. And I feel that 99% or a great percentage of what has been said has been appropriate. Everybody has maintained decorum, but for a few comments, it's best to just move on as opposed to highlight them. This is true, Judge, but I am witnessing a building of momentum, and I'm encouraging the court to direct the state to tap down on that momentum so it does not reoccur and it does not become a theme. Thank you, Judge. Your Honor, for the record, yes. the only thing the state has said to any of these witnesses when they get up is would they like to say something on behalf of the victim they're representing? There's been no encouraging or inciting as Mr. Weeks has put on this record. That is a blatant falsehood and a recreation of the record. As far as no objections being made, it's the defense that could have objected. It's not the state's duty to object to their own witnesses when they're testifying. Okay. I, I, listen, I've already heard. If you have anything else to say, you can put it in writing at a later time. I've heard from both sides more than once. That's going to be it. I've made my decision. Like I said, 99% of what's been testified to has been appropriate. I do not want to highlight uh, the few things that were said that were perhaps not appropriate, and let's move on. You can have as many seconds as you want in writing, and you can put all of your objections in writing. They've been made multiple times from your chief assistant, from Ms. McNeil, and I don't want to hear anything else. I've already heard it. Is there something that has not already been argued? Yes, ma'am. Okay, exactly what is it? Judge, before Mr. Schachter took the podium and testified before this court, um, I, sh I wanted to, to reflect both Mr. Marcus and Mr. Satz looked at the statement prior, prior to the reading. And so their implicit adoption of what he was saying, of this improper arguments, 
Okay, but what you are doing right now is highlighting something and making more of a spectacle. So if your office in general does not want to facilitate any or incite violence, then we need to just sit down and move on. That's it. There were 18 witnesses, 16 or 18 witnesses that testified today. There was nothing that was said until Ms. McNeil made her point made, and, you know, we're moving on. But is the court going to do anything about maybe stopping it from happening again? When these people are upset about specific things that have gone on from that table, like shooting the middle finger up at this court and laughing and joking, Ms. McNeil, be quiet. When these people have sat in this courtroom and watched this behavior from that table and they want to say that they're not happy about it, what is the problem? Judge, I have no problem because I have thick skin. But once you bring in my children, I think that's highly improper. I didn't even sport. know you have children. I don't know what you're talking about. Your children? What about your children? For them to comment on my children is highly improper. And for this court to allow that kind of testimony okay. is also improper. There was... I don't remember any comments about any children. And if there were, it, it obviously didn't, it, it, it came and went without me noticing it. Trish, I can assure you that if, if they were talking about your children, you would definitely notice it. You need to sit down right now. You're out of line. In fact, you're excused. You need to go sit in the back with your, with your uh, <laughs> chief public defender. He's the public defender, Judge. Mr. Weeks. Please ask the lawyer from your office to go sit down and not say anything else. To try to threaten my children and bring up my children is inappropriate. Go to the back of the room now. That just violated about every rule of professional responsibility that I have ever, I have never. If you're this dude here, sauntering you're going up. to Judge, I asked you to go sidebar on this matter. You sidebar or not, you don't have one of your assistant public defenders. Wow, he just sauntered up. This is the uh this is the Parkland shooters. This is one of the final uh, hearings because the jury already returned their verdict in the sentencing trial for for the Parkland shooter, Nicholas Cruz. And she is going off on the defense attorneys. Say something about my children. Judge, that same venom that the court is expressing is the same venom that defense counsel had to sit through this entire morning she when their brought children up her children were being multiple referenced. times during the trial. Nobody knows if I'm barren or not. They don't Judge, know about my children. Judge, sit down. If she's sit down. barren Judge, or not. Sit down, Mr. Weeks. Please do not summarily dismiss. I'm me. summarily dismissing. Wait, who? No one knows if I'm barren or not. What in the fuck? Who says that? Other than like Baron Trump. Like no one knows if I'm barren or not. What the hell? Donald Trump himself, when he was posing as Baron. John Barron. No one knows if I'm barren or not. Like what in the Who says that? that defense counsel had to sit through this entire morning she when their brought children up her children multiple referenced. times during the trial nobody knows if i'm barren or not they judge, don't know about my children judge, sit down sit down judge sit down mr weeks please do not summarily dismiss i'm summarily dismissing I'm asking you go the court. sit down i'm asking the court i asked the court to go sidebar go sit down you don't threaten the Judge, court's children. Your everyone in this courtroom. Just did that. Go sit down. No, no one in this courtroom had to endure what we Go had to endure. Go sit down. Miss Miss McNeil has made her children a spectacle more than once during this trial. That was her choice. You have absolutely no right to have one of your assistants come up here and suggest something about my children. Now, please. Go Fuck to all your children. Judge. You're inappropriate. Figuratively, not literally. Go sit down. Don't fuck Judge, children. Do you have a brief recess? No. Go sit down. May I have a brief recess so I can speak to my attorneys? So there you, there you have it. I just wanted to highlight some of that wild back and forth in the courtroom. I don't even know what's left to, to, to be done. I don't, I don't even know what they are, are because the jury returned the verdict of life. It's like, that's it. I don't know what other formalities they were meeting to discuss. 
And yeah, I do really feel like she's been grandstanding for the cameras and this this has been a very high profile trial. She was she was very rough on the defense throughout the entire thing. Moving to a, I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to transition from this. There's, there's no segue there. I should have just came back and talked to you guys a little bit and intro the new show. You live, you learn. So the, the other day I was talking to my buddy. We were getting high on on like he'll he'll voice chat, video chat with me, and we'll get high together. And I was telling him about um, like one of the freaking newses this week or this past week was the attorney in Florida that fought the motorcycle laws, and he died in a motorcycle crash. Motor, the motorcycle helmet laws. He died in a, in a crash without wearing a hel- helmet, and I used uh, Lance Morissette's Ironic. And uh, so I'm, I'm talking to my buddy uh, on video chat, and he said something about his bowl was in his pocket, and I started saying, like, he's got one bowl in his pocket. And then I told him about using the Alanis Morissette song in the, in the freaking news. Then I also told him about... Uh, Kanye West getting kicked out of Skechers headquarters and that I had thought about using Alanis Morissette's uninvited because like the Skechers called him an uninvited guest or whatever and I did eventually do that I did that one and the, the fucking artwork my my thumbnail game is on point guys I'm telling you my thumbnail game is on point yay kicked out of Skechers headquarters <laughs> But I used I used the Lannis Morissette's uninvited. So I was like, that's three Lannis Morissette's references. And then my buddy said something about like need another bowl to put in this bong or some shit like that. I I can't even remember what he said, but he's like, you live, you learn. I'm like, that's the fourth Lannis Morissette reference. <laughs> Sad that he took someone with him. She wasn't wearing a helmet either. <laughs> she wasn't wearing a helmet either, clinically. You want to see a picture of him? I have one. <laughs> also, my thumbnail for that one was great. I cleared out the thumbnails the other day. No, no, no. There it is. There it is. Still got it. Yes, I have a picture of them alive. I think they're even hugging each other. That's where I got that's where I got his headshot from here. Thumbnail game on point. That's why I'm trying. I'm trying my, my ass off. That's what the that's what the redesign of all this is about. This is to be more appealing to the YouTube algorithm and to people that stumble across the show and give us a shot. That's what all these thumbnails are about. Trying to kick it into high gear. I spent way too much time on that one. <laughs> I love I love this one. <laughs> Put the nose on him. Uh, this one's from last night. This is the, the Pelosi attacker. Put his, just Googled person with a hammer or man with a hammer or some shit. This one from the Freak Show cracked me up. Where, where this one, this one, where she's she's holding the rival. Ooh, ooh, ooh! I love uh, Lula with the thumbs up with uh, uh, Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro. I have to, I have to really think on it to fuck it up. Bolsonaro, or however Dave Rubin said it in the background. He's crying, and it's working too. Like I'm up like five thousand percent on everything. It's working on the YouTube. World's dirtiest man dies after a bath. I asked my buddy, I was like, would it be funnier if I had somebody there with a with a sponge? Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck. 
I really the I, I like the I like the media winch with me, but I think the pumpkin ended up looking like Hulk Hogan and not me. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be so easy to to make me read on a pumpkin, but no, it, it looks like a Hulk Hogan pumpkin. Looks like media winch carved a Hulk Hogan pumpkin. I, I photoshopped his hands. I'm going to admit it. I made them bigger. His actual real hands you wouldn't be able to see if I hadn't uh, photoshopped them to make them bigger. So you're welcome. I photoshopped his hands. <laughs> also from last night, the Dan Bulldog story. But him thinking kids are, uh, are pissing in the litter box. Uh, RB, that's something that I couldn't have included in the like. I did. I don't have enough time. I have to. You know, I have to keep them under a minute. I didn't have enough time to include this in the story, but the journalist in me would have included that. We do not know if a helmet would have saved him. He went splat pretty hard into a a tractor trailer. Oh my god. Yep, that's one of that's one of the working out the kinks of uh, of the new layout. If I can't see what I'm I'm broadcasting, then I don't know that you're not seeing my screen. Yeah, there's the bulldog in the yeah. There's the tiny. I I see. I gotta do this whole joke again. I did indeed Photoshop his hands. I made them bigger, otherwise you won't be able to see them. Love Merrick Garland laughing at him. <laughs> There's the media winch with the Hulk Hogan pumpkin. World's dirtiest man dies after bath. <laughs> There's Lula with the thumbs up with Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro crying in the background. His name's actually. His name's actually Bolsonaro. <laughs> Bolsonaro, J.R. Bolsonaro. That's the correct pronunciation. I've been fucking it up on purpose. Just want to point that out. Woman slips out of her cuffs and opens fire on the cops. This is the brand new uh, thumbnail for the freak show that I just debuted a few days ago. Dancing to get out of a DUI. I use sexy cop outfit. <laughs> the Pelosi, the Pelosi attacker with the hammer. I've been, I've, now I will admit, I've been a little clickbaity with the headlines, and I'm sorry about that. But like, I get rewarded, I get rewarded for it. That one, that was, that was the thumbnail I've spent the most time on, because making that fucking record look like it's on the record player was, was difficult. Not difficult, it just took me some time. There's the lawyer who went flying off his motorcycle without a helmet. And there, yeah, okay, that's that's me showing off like my thumbnails and stuff. This one's really good too. <laughs> Spent a lot of time on that one. Ooh, 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 this is my favorite one. The Pope pointing at the porn. That video did not do as well as I expected it to do. I mean, it did okay. It got like three or four hundred views. Come on, who doesn't click on that video with that thumbnail? Kanye getting kicked out of Skechers. I'm real proud of that one because I made the I made the jacket look like his stupid ass jackets. It looked like it had dirt on it. Clickbait works, and also like I kind of clickbait towards the right wingers. I try to set them off. I try to trigger them with my headlines, and it works. It works. It's just the opposite. What I what I thought was going to happen that I would trigger the right wingers to watch my videos. It doesn't actually result in me getting left people to watch it because it becomes more popular for some odd reason. I just get more and more chuds watching it. College professor is out after a viral video shows him screaming in a student's face. Robert Evans Pickard, a history professor, was seen on video shouting at a student to leave his classroom. Find out what this is all about. This happened at Tennessee State University. Get out! You are failed this course, whatever your name is. 
fell this course, whatever your name is. I can't imagine what a fucking student could have done. This professor at Tennessee State University apparently talks to his students like that all the time. Battle Opossum, yeah, it's new new look, same great troll taste. But I I wanna I wanna know what the fuck that student did. So in a statement to WSMV TV on Tuesday, Pickard said he had resigned. I deeply regret what happened in class. I lost my temper and did something I should have never done. I've been under pressure lately and have been frustrated with students who pay attention to their cell phones and laptops and wonder why they get low grades. But that does not excuse my behavior. I apologize to the students and offered my resignation. I am now retired as I had planned anyway. Please respect my privacy. TSU student uh, Sharena Rains said in an interview with the outlet that she was so shocked by the outburst, I think he should be fired. On Rate My Professors, a website where students can write anonymous reviews about university teachers, Pickard's page was flooded with negative feedback following the incident. In several other posts dating as far back as 2017, he was also rated as an awful teacher, with commenters saying that they felt they were set up to fail his course. He didn't need to add that he planned it anyway. I know, it was a jerkwad thing to say. A jerkwad thing to say. Speaking of jerkwads, I hate to do it. I really do. I don't... I'm tired of talking about Kanye West. But he keeps doing shit that makes me have to talk about him. There's video... Kanye storms out of a kid's soccer game after a heated exchange with a parent. So this is at his damn kid's soccer game. Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. This was clickbaity. He looks upset, but like he's had some bad days here recently. I thought he's gonna be yelling profanities at her and shit. <laughs> the slicker boots. Yeah, he's his new fashion apparel is like construction worker. We watched video from his fashion show, and he was he was uh, walking through mud. Yeah, yeah. I I should have not played this. This is this is me falling prey to. Uh, not watching shit beforehand. If I'd watched this, I wouldn't have played it. I wouldn't have felt that it was important enough because he he might have been snappy with that woman, but there there it wasn't a real outburst. He does look like he's upset. Working class chic, some shit like that. I don't claim to know what's going on with Kanye. I do know that the odds of winning the lottery are astronomical. But somebody's going to win. Might as well be you. Because nobody well, fucking the, won. The Powerball jackpot uh, we've been talking about for what feels like weeks now <laughs> is up to $1.2 billion. Yeah, no one won. Billion with a B. Night, so it just keeps rolling over. And so now we're thinking about what you could buy. Right. Now we're dreaming. It's, okay. Yeah. Because you could buy a lot with $1.2 <laughs> I'll go ahead because I did do this story as a freaking news the other day. I can tell you that if you take the lump sum, which most people do. At $1 billion, it was $495 million was what you would get from the lump sum. Or you can take it as an annual annuity. 
over something like 26 years, you would get more money that way and it would probably work out better for you. It would probably work out better for you. If you take the lump sum, you need to invest that shit. Normal people don't have a concept of what a million is, let alone a billion, but a billion is astro-fucking-nomical. I guess not, because that, that would be a trillion or a zillion. <laughs> I guess it is astronomical, though, because uh, Sagan, Carl Sagan, billion with a B, B. It gets lower with taxes. Sure. That takes a lot out, but it's <laughs> but still, still nothing to sneeze at. So KTLA's Aaron Myers is live in Beverly Hills. You've been out there dreaming or thinking about <laughs> where this money could go, Aaron. <laughs> yes. Hi, you guys. Right now, I'm still window shopping because I was not the winner, nor was anyone else. As you said, it's going to roll over to Wednesday's drawing. But hey, if you were the big Estimated winner, why 1. not go on a shopping billion. spree on Rodeo Drive? For those men who love shopping, I'm sure there are some out there. Why not shop at Brioni? Uh, you could get a whole new wardrobe. There are stores all along this way. But most people I talk to say they would help family or donate. So that is a great way to spend the money as well. Now, although no one won the big prize last night, there are two tickets in California that had five numbers correct. One of those winners bought their ticket locally at 777 Market now, at 1900 I do not South encourage Lorea. anyone to play the lottery. As for the winners, they just but missed If you go the buy yourself a ticket number, or two when it's this high, that's just good fun. In all, California saw more than 670,000 winners of some type. In total, across no the country, illusion that there you're were going 13 to tickets sold that matched five numbers, but not the Powerball. In fact, more than 5.4 million tickets Gets one prize is totaling $59.5 million. The drawing was the 38th since a ticket with all six numbers was sold. As for the winning numbers, take a look. They were 13, 19, 36, 39, 59, and the Powerball number was 13. The next drawing is Wednesday, and the estimated prize will be $1.2 billion, which would make it the fourth largest in U.S. history and the second largest in Powerball's history. The As fourth. for the odds of matching all five numbers and the Powerball, well, they aren't great. It's one in about 200. 193 million according to lotto officials so that's why we're dreaming now if you were to win you can choose to receive the prize as an annuity paid in 30 graduated payments over 29 years or a lump sum payment of more than five. Oh yeah 29 I, thought I, said, I think I said 26 we spoke with legal, legal expert Allison Treasel who says before you win you should sign the back of your ticket and take a picture of it and then has this advice if you were to win the big bucks once you are the big winner Slow down a minute. While California requires that you disclose your name and the place of the location, you don't need to do much else. So don't hold a press conference, hire a lawyer, hire a financial planner, and then decide whether you should take a lump sum or a yearly payment, depending on the tax consequences to you. Yeah, that most lottery hour. winners, we'll talk about, uh, it ends in tragedy. You are in an office pool, which I know we have that at KTLA, how you should handle that if your group wins. As for the drawing, the next drawing is Wednesday night at 7.59. Reporting live here. Money doesn't magically make your life better. Usually amplifies the problems you already have. I mean, it gets, money can solve a lot of your issues. Being financially stable can solve a lot of issues. There is, there is very much value in that however having money doesn't fix yourself doesn't fix the problems that you have all right i have promised you i've promised you a new kitten i will go see if the new kitten is, is available to be paraded in here give me just a minute or two
Oh god, we might even be able to get her on microphone. Oh, I don't think you guys could hear it. I don't think the mic can pick her up. This is Trixie. Animal video. Get the itty bitty baby. Smell bad, baby. I thought they cleaned your butt. She's a sweet little thing. She was up playing. I've got to take her back. She was very comfy. I think she's upset that uh, she's no longer comfy in the blanket. Itty bitty, about five weeks is what they estimated she was. Cute as shit, tortoise shell calico, and a little bobtail. A little bobtail. What is it? It's Tuesday night. What's going on on Tuesday night? Is it down ballot or is it time for uh, local love? What's going on on the Echo Play? That's where we're going, I would assume. Bender is on. Matt Bender always an excellent watch. Uh, I don't see no Echo Plex. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we got down ballot going on. I'm going to send you guys over to producer Dave. Go ahead, light one up, tip one back. It's all right to have a little fun before you hit the sack. I started saying that long before um, I'd even hit the raid button. <laughs> We'll be back tomorrow night. We've got the New Hampshire debate between Don Bulduck and Maggie Hassan. I don't know what time that is. We might be coming on an hour early. Look out for that. We might be on at like 7. I didn't check the time. That's my that's my bad. Go ahead. Light one up. Tip one back. It's all right to have a little fun before we hit the sack. I'm Justin Freegan. We'll see you tomorrow night on the Troll Patrol. Live. <laughs>